Hello, welcome to the third round. Uh, we have been put on the draw, and this opening seven is probably a bit too slow. Um, it's nice to have all the land you're going to want, but really drawing any extra land after this is just a waste, so we're going to Mulligan. Uh, this is better. Uh, we don't have one creature, but we have the two equipment to go with it, um, and the strength of arms. So we'll probably put weapon trainer on top um, and hope to find a red source quite early. With our opponent playing Cinderglade, maybe some sort of werewolves deck, maybe the ramp deck. Uh, the ramp deck's a more competitive one. Okay, Naya Tokens. Is what I'm going to have a guess at here. And the sequence in here is to play Captain's Claws and equip next turn. We can't do Captain's Claws and a turn three Stoneforge Masterwork, sadly. <clears throat> um, Oath of Gideon. Yeah, Naya Tokens. Um, so we didn't get the needed um, third land. Uh, so we probably just equip Captain's Claws here. Um, Pre-combat, attack, and if they block, we'll use the Strength of Arms. Next is another creature as well. We got Nissa. No, Arling Cord. Okay. Flips and puts. Mm -hmm. The, I think the extra point of loyalty here is actually uh, quite important for Arling Cord. Um, I've used her a bit and she's actually quite a planeswalker due to her lack of loyalty, so she works nicely with Oath of Gideon. Uh, now what we want to play here... Um, I think we send both our creatures at Arling and then play Strength of Arms. Um, so actually, we play Weapon Strainer first. And we're going to choose to attack. Um, hmm. We're going to use Strength of Arms regardless, so we're probably going to attack the player. It kind of choreographs what we're going to do but we're going to do it regardless of what our opponent does um, so we'll strength of arms onto the human soldier to kill Arlen token so now Stoneforge Masterwork on the weapons trainer is a plus three plus three which is very nice There's a X cost card, so it could be a hangback walker. Yep. Leaving up a fiery impulse as well. So we just equip the Stoneforge Masterwork here. And we're going to attack with all. I see our opponent blocks. Yep. But they get down to six in the process. Um, and next turn we play a weapons trainer and equip a captain's claws. Yeah, sprint scoops. 
Okay, so Naya tokens. Um, we're not particularly set up against token decks. We don't have a sweeper. Um, I think always watching might be an idea. Um, purely because it pumps our creatures. Um, I don't think we want roast. If we're going to have a removal spell, it should be fiery impulse. Um, I don't know how this uh, how this token deck would sideboard, to be honest. So it's possible we might want to, we might potentially want to bring in like a retreat to Amiria for the anthem effect. Um, yeah, I think we'll try two retreats. Uh, so this hand's a little like the one in the opening game, in that it's a little slow. Uh, but it does have Needle Spires, and we're on the draw. I think we can keep this on the draw. We've got two creatures um, to start with. Okay, and we now have a Stoneforge Masterwork. So we want to be able to go... One, two, three. So we're probably going to leave playing the Needle Spires until about turn four. <coughs> Westvale Abbey. The foil Westvale Abbey at that. Okay, kills the Expedition Envoy. So we probably now play Needle Spires on turn three because there's no point playing the Stoneforge Masterwork. This could actually be a um, quite Planeswalk heavy version of the deck. Hmm. Okay, Captain's Claws is the, an interesting one now. We could play Captain's Claws and Equip. Uh, next turn, we'll be able to actually play, uh, we won't be able to play the Captain's Claws, equip it, and equip the Stoneforge Masterwork. Uh, so I think that's what we'll do. And then next turn, if we do a one drop, We'll play that in Stoneforge Masterwork. If not, we'll probably just play Stoneforge Masterwork and Needle Spires. Okay, so our opponent did miss a land drop last turn, and the Oath of Nissering, uh, yeah, presumably for a land. They have Thraven Inspector in hand, which I presume will come down. Okay, so if we play the Stoneforge Masterwork and equip it, our core ally will trade for the Thraven Inspector. I won't trade, it'll just get chump blocked. We could put the Stoneforge Masterwork on the core ally. I think I'd like that. It means the core ally will survive combat with the Thraven Inspector. Combat. So not blocking there seems like a brave move. <clears throat> Opponent's facing down nine if they don't kill anything next turn. Potentially more. Oath of Gideon gets some two tokens. Okay, well, Strength of Arms. Hmm. So if we attack, our opponent can block everything, bar one. Um, so I think we... We could also activate Needle Spires and attack him with Needle Spires as well. Um... Which is a double strike. I think it was five. The two would get round. Presumably the two one ones. Um, 
be strength of arms. The one creature that gets through, we get through for three. So I think I think Needle Spires is the correct play here. Needle Spires puts the most damage through. I think our opponent, our opponent, our opponent has to block the ally and needle spires, I'm pretty sure. So we could get four through here. Uh, we could lose an ally token, yeah. I think that's the best block for our opponent. They have a creature left in the Thraven Inspector to actually do something. Um, They're looking for removal here or a way to get a bunch of tokens down. Yeah, they found nothing, so they scoop. So, yeah, that's uh, three wins out of three with this uh, red white allies deck. It's quite nice, it's quite aggressive, um, particularly with the right draw. It can punish your opponent for playing slowly and missing land drops. Um, yeah, and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Uh, please like the videos, comment what you want to see, uh, follow us on Twitter, and I hope to uh, see you joining us for future videos.